You can go to events like Pet Expo, which happens every year, or events organized by Pets Magazine and Club Pets. They actually have many booths there that give out free samples. So you can go home with like 5 to 20 different samples to try before you even buy anything. So I guess that's a good way on saving money. <laughs> So for dog owners who like to switch their dog food brands or flavours, one of my readers actually recommended me to try to collect samples from pet shops or pet suppliers like B2K before committing to buy a new bag of food because every time you buy a new bag of food, you actually risk your dog not liking it or you know developing a negative or allergic reaction to it. We usually make our own treats. So we'll buy liver, chicken liver or pork liver to slice it and we'll put it in an oven and bake it until it's very dehydrated. This applies to the same as meat. So we buy beef cubes or pork cubes to basically bake it until they're very dry. When I make treats for them, I know exactly what are the ingredients that go into it and I know that the ingredients are fresh, no preservatives are added. And it's really a lot cheaper. Like a chicken fillet can make treats that will last them two weeks. It's just for like three, four dollars. So it's really a lot cheaper than if you buy. But the commercial ones do have some benefits because they do have added like supplements and nutrients. So I do make a balance of both. Buying in bulk will definitely save you money, but if you don't take care of this bulk bought food, it can spoil. And when it spoils and you don't notice and you give it to your dog, health problems can arise from that. If you take good care of the food and you seal it in packages, then that's okay. The quantity of the food you feed your dog should also suit your dog's target weight. So if you're not sure what your dog's target weight is, bring your dog to a vet and they will check it for you. So feeding your dog the right amount of food will prevent wastage in the long run, help you cut some costs. If people are conscious about costs, right, the breed of dog should be very important in the decision making process. Smaller breeds of dogs will require less food and hence less money spent in the long run. They will also require less medication, less veterinary prophylactic fees. Dogs with long hair, for example, will require more money spent on grooming. Dogs who are very active, people normally spend more money on training and behavioural classes for them. If people are intending to save money, a smaller dog with short coat would suit them more. Grooming can be pretty costly if you do it every single month. So what I do is I try to bring my dog for grooming once every two months. And how I do that is that I actually purchase my own tools like scissors, nail clippers and brushes. For example, if her fur around her eyes are getting too long, I'll actually trim it myself. And if her nails require trimming, I'll trim it myself as well. For toys, she's a bit destructive. Whatever toys we buy, it will be gone the next day. It's either torn apart or she will really eat it. So we basically stop buying toys. Then we will basically give her things like you know old tennis ball to play with or even shoes. She loves to play with shoes and slippers. She likes to play with things around the house. So we just let her do that. <laughs> Very often, we do get puppies coming in here and the primary complaint is that they've been vomiting for two or three days in a row and we take an x-ray and there's something big stuck in the intestine. So swallowing foreign objects, or what we call a foreign body, is a very easily preventable thing. The cost of fixing that is anywhere from a few hundred to a few grand. Prepare it such that there's nowhere that they can get stuck, chew on cables, toys or things left around that can potentially be hazardous to their health. I've also read somewhere that in 2012, in the US, the top two canine medical conditions were ear infections and allergies. So make sure to clean your dog's ears regularly and to try to find out what kind of allergies your dog has. So when I got Tegan, she actually had very bad teeth, so she had to end up going for dental scaling. So we kind of learned from there that um, brushing the dog's teeth is very important. So from now on, we actually brush their teeth every day and they love it because we use the dog toothpaste. So when I call like Shasha Ya, they all run over and get their teeth brushed. I will add that sterilization is very important. So when I got Pekin, um, she wasn't sterilized and on a regular vet check we discovered that she actually had pyometra, which is a uterine infection. And as a result, her vet bill actually came up to like $900. But if she was sterilized when she was younger, that would be just a couple of hundred. So like sterilization really does make a difference and it keeps the dog healthy as well. <laughs> They have good quality and their prices are reasonable. Right. For three pieces you get a cheaper price and six pieces you get an even cheaper price. So you get to save money in the sense that you don't buy the wrong product.